If you haven't studied the defensive arts of one Herbert Jones, the first play-in game of 2022 against the San Antonio Spurs was a great crash course. In March, Jones hounded Spurs all-star point guard DeJounte Murray for two games, holding him under 30% shooting from the floor and generally disrupting the San Antonio offense. And it was the same story in the play-in, with Herb pestering Murray from the opening tip, driving through this screen to stay on his hip, and then poking the ball free from behind for a turnover. A minute later, DeJounte uses two screens, and watch Herb quickly slide in front of both picks. He basically beats Murray around his own screen, then recovers to shut off an advantage. Herb has the quickness to slide up and around a pick like this, then laterally move to stay with the ball. And again on the rescreen, he hops his feet up toward the dribbler and pursues Zach Levine well, and he's constantly giving multiple efforts, closing out to the corner. This navigation doesn't work every time. It looks like he wants to slide up and force Murray to the sideline, but he gets stuck on the screen, and it's one of the few times DeJounte broke free all night. But I love the strength of Herb's hips and lower body when he's in these spots. He slides up to force Murray left here, so the big flips the screen nicely, and Herb plows through to get back in front of the ball immediately, and that prevents any breakdowns at the point of attack. It went like this all night for DeJounte, with Herb harassing him all over the court, and whenever he was screened off, he'd recover and pop back up to shut down a drive. Remember, Murray's really quick, and one of the reasons he made the All-Star game was his slashing ability against defenders in space. Exhibit A is when Jones went to the bench in the first quarter, and Murray blew past Najee Marshall for free throws. It wasn't nearly as easy with her back in, and this is some old school foot fire with a ton of short, choppy steps, ready to recover instantly on the cross, which forces Murray to alter his shot at the last second. Herb's feet can be more active than a Cole Walker. Watch him tap his left foot quickly to reposition so he can maintain that broad base and explode laterally off his left foot, changing directions twice here to nearly block Murray. This lateral acceleration off one foot is uncanny. You can see his left foot does most of the work to slide back in front of the ball and maintain that wide stance. And if you think he looks like a cornerback hawking receivers at times, it's because he played cornerback growing up. And when ball handlers juke him in one direction, he can use that amazing lateral force to recover. And here he adds a swipe down, but Jalen Brown somehow keeps the ball and scores. Herb's seven foot wingspan comes in handy when he's in pursuit like this. We saw him pick Murray's pocket just like this to start the game. And he can also just take your lunch money straight up because that length can reach around dribblers. At the end of the first half, you could see his accuracy and precision when jabbing at the ball, dispossessing Keldon Johnson as he started a dribble. And this really shows up when Herb digs down toward a ball handler and reaches into the cookie jar. Kelvin survives here, but the pass is rushed so Jones can close out to the shooter. Herb's already one of the league's most dangerous helpers on drives like this, just pilfering penetrators by sliding toward the middle. He can lurk around the foul line area, then he's so quick horizontally, he can choke off drives with his length. Another Herb specialty is how low he'll attack the dribble, practically scraping the floor at times as he targets the ball. And here you can see his extraordinary functional length bending way down to snatch this dribble on its way up. When defenders stop the ball this well, they often sacrifice team defense, but Jones remains really aware of threats most of the time. That was a foul on his teammate, and later in the third quarter, he's pretty quick to help on this back door, but gets a bit horizontal with his right arm. He's not a big presence at the rim, but he's long and athletic enough to rotate and be a factor. And more importantly, he has really good threat detection systems, realizing a Jokic cutter is deadly and sliding over early. And that lateral speed means he can help from the top too, 
reading the closeout here, sliding as this drive starts so he can somehow beat Isaac Okoro to the spot and then jump backwards to block the shot without fouling. And they should just send that play right to Springfield, Massachusetts. This one shows a different kind of awareness, sagging way off his man so he can help protect this big mismatch in the post and as he goes to recover, he still reads the entry pass and swivels around like a top to save the layup. All of this is why, despite being a first-year player, Jones looks like one of the best perimeter defenders in the league in one-number metrics, flirting with big man impact in some of these estimates of value. At first blush, it's not even obvious what his weaknesses are, He's not a high-volume paint protector, which probably limits his defensive ceiling, but he's incredibly well-rounded for a perimeter defender, capable of even banging a little bit with bigger players. He's certainly vulnerable to power and size out there. LeBron threw his weight into him with success during their matchups this season, but then again, LeBron does that to almost everyone. If I had to nitpick, it can be hard for him to chase smaller guards off the ball. He is 6'6 barefoot, and the Hawks started this game by sending Trey Young away from the ball, and Herb couldn't stay with him through multiple screens, and that switch lets Young masterfully manipulate Jones in help, forcing Herb to commit to the roller before hitting an open shooter. That's just offensive brilliance. But he's not weak in this area by any means, and late in the third he was asked to chase the red-hot Devin Vassell around, and that length probably bothered him just enough at the last second. Jones is occasionally beaten with straight-line quickness, Murray got past him in the third that way, but he usually shuts down smaller guards in space and can even surprise them with his reach. Heck, he surprised the seven-foot Jakob Pertl in this game with those long arms, containing the ball and then turning around to stuff a floater, and he wasn't done swooping in for another steal in this defensive masterpiece, and of course, all of those turnovers can lead to easy offense. Amazingly, we might have saved the best for last, because Herb's length makes him deadly in passing lanes. This shows up in two ways. First, on the ball, where he can make basic passes difficult. His hands are constantly tracking the rock, so Will Barton can't even make a basic connection with a cutter. Second, when he's away from the ball, his lateral burst launches him into passing lanes, which catches even the best players off guard. Here's Chris Paul throwing a basic pass, and Herb completely surprises him with length and horizontal quickness, and then finishes it with a sweet pass in transition to boot. He also had his revenge against Trey, zoning up two shooters on the weak side, and this time Herb fakes out Young, moving toward the top, only to read the QB's eyes and pick off the pass to the corner. And just for fun, here's some more lovely passing and transition. DeJounte and the Spurs felt this passing lane presence in their earlier meetings, and in the play-in matchup, the Herb Jones experience, not on Herb, as they say in New Orleans, held Murray to 5 of 19 shooting, and the Spurs to a subpar 103 offensive rating in Jones's 37 minutes of action. He's already 23, so I'm not sure how much more defensive growth we can expect to see, but I also don't know if that even matters, because right now, in my eyes, Herbert Jones is already playing at an all-defensive level. If you want more content, head over to patreon.com slash thinking basketball. That's where we have additional videos, articles, stats, and more. By the way, Tim Duncan was the last rookie to make an all defensive team in 1998. So it's incredibly rare for first year defenders to be this good. Let me know what you think of Jones down below. And otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this one all the way to the end and that wherever you are, you are having a great day.